Amen. Well, as Pastor always says, lift your Bible in the air and just declare this after me today. Say, today I choose to experience life. Life begins with salvation and life is developed through spiritual growth and life is shared through us being a witness of his great love. This is the word of life and this word of life is living in me. And this word of life is the light of all men. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Well, if you have your Bibles uh, or your phones or whatever device you're using, I'd like for you to turn to John chapter 16. Actually, turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 16. This is going to be our foundational text, but we're going to go back to it in just a few moments. But Matthew chapter 16 and verse 19. I'll give you just a second to get there. Matthew 16. And actually, let me start reading in the in verse 13. It said, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, whom do men say that I, the son of man am? And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias or Elijah, Others say Jeremiah or Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed art thou Simon Barjona for flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto thee, but my father, which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock or upon this revelation that I'm the Christ, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, this is our key text for this message today. And I will give verse 19, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Amen. Amen. So today's message is entitled Keys of the Kingdom. Amen. Let me start my timer here so I make sure I don't go over time. Keys of the Kingdom. Now I'm going to start by uh, giving you a message or a word that God gave me earlier this year. In March 25th, I received the following word from the Lord. And some of you who may see some of my Facebook posts, I don't post a lot of stuff on Facebook. Usually if I do, it's a scripture. It's a word that God has given me or it's something about my family. But God gave me this word and I really felt the, the urgency of sharing it uh, on my Facebook page. And it's perfectly in line with everything that Pastor Byron has been teaching us throughout this year. But the Lord said to me, when you choose to chime in with what the world is saying and doing, you discredit the power and the authority that you have been given to change the situation. I'm gonna read it one more time. When you choose to chime in with what the world is saying and doing, you discredit the power and the authority that you have been given to change the situation, amen? Now, God has not called us to just go with the flow of whatever is going on in the world. Now, if you are new to this broadcast or maybe you're a new believer or you're not even a believer and you might be thinking, you know, what is she talking about with world? There's nothing wrong with the world. Well, let's describe what the Bible says about the difference between the world and the kingdom of God, amen? The Bible makes a clear distinction between the world and the kingdom of God. Let's talk about what the Bible says about the world. In John chapter 16, verse 33, uh, and I don't have time to, to flip through. You can go back and look at these and we'll have them in the comment section for you. It says, these things I have spoken unto you that in me, ye might have peace. In the world, ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So Jesus is talking about the world as something that has to be, has been 
overcome. So if he's overcoming something, that means that he doesn't want us to live in the situation of the world. Amen. First John two verses 15 says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the father is not in him. So here Jesus tells us that we're not to love the world. John 17, which is one of my favorite books, uh, chapters of the Bible. And Jesus is praying in the garden before he goes to the cross and he's praying for us. In verses 14 through 18, he says, I have given them my word. This is John chapter 17. And the world hath hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Verse 15, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I also sent them into the world. So Jesus has sent them, sent us as his believers, his body, the body of Christ, into the world. But he clearly says, we are in this world, but we are not of it. We are. Are from the kingdom of God. So what is the kingdom of God? John chapter 3 verses 3 and verse 5 says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So in order to be a part or in the kingdom of God, or the kingdom of God to be in you, you have to be born again. Amen. Verse five says, Jesus answered, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water, that's a natural birth, and of the spirit, that's being born again or salvation, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Luke 17, verses 20 through 21, verse 20 says, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. And this is for believers. The kingdom of God, God's will, God's dominion, God's way of doing things is on the inside of us. Amen. And finally, John 3 verses. Uh, well, I read that already. Amen. So let's go on to Romans chapter 14, verse 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not meat or drink or and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So that's what God desires for his people, not to be of the world or behaving or, or experiencing what's going on in this natural world. Yes, he wants us to be in this world and he wants us to experience this earth the things that he has blessed us to be experienced because he placed us in this earth for a reason because he, the Bible says he gives us all things richly to enjoy. But we all know with the fall of man, there came death and there came sickness and there came a mindset and a nature that goes against God's word. And God does not want us to experience that world. He wants us to experience the blessings of the kingdom of God, amen, which is righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So I said all that to go back to my statement. When we choose to chime in with what the world is saying and doing, you discredit the power and the authority that you have been given to change the situation. See, we are in this world, but God doesn't expect us, like I said before, to just go with the flow of everything that's going on in this world. God expects us to change the, the situation. He expects us to bring the kingdom of God with us wherever we go. Amen. So let's not, and I'm going to, I'm getting ahead of myself, but let's not be saying what the world is saying. Let's not chime in. No, let's use the power and the authority of God's word to declare his kingdom in the earth. Amen. So as believers or Christians, we are in the world but we are no longer of the world. If you are a believer, you are no longer of the world. You have entered into and you are citizens of the kingdom of God. Amen. 
In this season, the world is full of darkness. We all know Isaiah chapter 60, where it says uh, there's gross darkness, but we are to shine. Amen. We are to let our light shine in this season. And as Pastor Byron has been teaching us as kingdom citizens, we are to be a light to the world. Amen. We are the light of the world. Amen. And in order to be light in the midst of darkness, that means that your nature, your appearance, and what comes from you must be different than the world. Amen. So if the world is full of darkness, we cannot effectively bring light. And pastor has taught us this. We cannot effectively bring light if we just look like the world around us. Even if our nature is no longer darkness, if we are not plugged into the source which causes our light to shine, then we will still appear like someone who has no light in them. So I meant to have one this morning, but if I was holding a light bulb in my hand, that light bulb is great. We know what it can do. But if that light bulb is not plugged into some source that empowers it to shine, then even though the potential is there, that light bulb is doing no good. And see, that's not what God has called us as Christians to be and to, to experience. He, we have the potential to shine light wherever there is darkness. Amen? So let's not be light bulbs with no, not are plugged in. No, we want to plug into that power source and we want to let our light shine. Amen. So going back again to the original word that God gave me, when you choose to chime in with what the world is saying and doing, you discredit the power and the authority that you have been given to change the situation. Now, I understand that I'm being very repetitive here, but, you know, repetitive is how we, re repetition is how we learn things. It's how we learn things in school. It's how our parents teach us. They say the same things over and over again. I, I always talk about how commercials, you see the same commercial over and over and over and over again. And see, a lot of times the, the enemy understands this strategy better than we do because he uses repetition to, to get his word into our, our lives because we're listening to the wrong things a lot of time. And he'll say things over and over and over and over again because he wants us to receive that word and for it to become a part of our thinking. But no, God wants us to hear his word over and over and over and over again so it becomes a part of our thinking amen amen we are in this world but we are not of it and we're supposed to speak his word to change the situation so what is the situation well we all know what's going on in this world right now we're dealing with a pandemic we're dealing with ethnic and social unrest we're dealing with political division like some we've never seen before. We're dealing with an attack on the foundations of our nation. We're dealing with evil that is being exposed in areas such as sex and human trafficking and pedophilia and all kinds of sexual immorality, uh, just all kinds of evil that we are seeing in the earth this day. And that's why we know we're in these last days. We're dealing with persecution of the church in our nation and worldwide. You know, we don't see it reported a lot, but Christians are being killed and persecuted all over the world for their beliefs. Now, we've been a bit privileged in this nation, which is why this nation is so great. Because up to this point, we've been able to freely worship God and declare our belief in Jesus without persecution. But that's under attack right now as well. And we're not supposed to sit back idly and just allow it to happen. Amen. Now, just a little sidebar. If you are really paying attention to what's going on in the earth, all those things that I just named off, everything that's going on in the world right now is directly connected to the enemy's plan, the enemy's plot to try and stop the will of God for the body of Christ, for the church. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what the media is telling you. What's really going on behind the scenes has to do with God's plan in the earth and God's people and God's church. 
And if we keep our focus on that, we're not going to get distracted by all these things that the, all these tools that the enemy is using. And pastor said it like before, don't get caught like the okie doke. I'm probably saying it wrong, <laughs> but don't get distracted. It's all a plot of the enemy to get us our focus on what's really going on. Let's keep our mind stayed on him. Amen. So that's the situation. There's darkness all around us. But as we read earlier in John chapter 17, he says, I have given them my word and the world hath hated them. This is verses 14 through 18, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I have also sent them into the world. So, amen. If we are going to change the situation in this world, we, cannot, we can't use the keys of the world to do it. We can't use Satan's tools. We can't use natural tools to fight a supernatural battle. Like I said before, everything that's going on is supernatural at its roots. It's, a, it's, a, it's an attack against the body of Christ, against God's plan and his will in the earth. But how many of you know we've read the back of the book and God's will, amen, will be done in Jesus' name, will be completed. But we cannot use the king, the keys of this world to do it. We must utilize the keys of the kingdom of God. And God's keys are supernatural. Amen. Let's look at our, our foundational text again. Matthew chapter 16. And I'm just going to skip ahead to verse 19 again. Verse 19 says, and I will give unto thee the keys of of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven in the new living translation it says i will give you the keys of the kingdom whatever you for forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven and whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven to just take it a step even further, let's look at it in the Amplified Version. It says, I will give you the keys, the authority of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind, forbid, declare to be improper and unlawful on earth will have already been bound in heaven. And whatever you loose or permit or declare lawful on earth will have already been loosed in heaven. It's already been done in heaven. It's our responsibility to bind it or to loose it here on the earth. Amen. So Jesus says that he has given us the keys of the kingdom. So let's talk about what are the keys of the kingdom. I have two definitions. Let's start out with what a key, what is a key. Uh, I looked this up in uh, Webster's 1823 dictionary. I encourage you to use it because dictionaries, the, the newer ones, really words are changing constantly from their original meaning. But I like this 1823 version because it goes back to a lot of biblical definitions of word, what words mean. But if you look up the word key, there are two definitions that really stood out to me. Number one, a key is an instrument for shutting or opening a lock by pushing the bolt one way or the other. So we all understand that. The second definition, and this is really the one I'm gonna focus on today, is in music, the key or key note is the fundamental note or tone to which the whole piece is accommodated and with which it usually begins and always ends. I'm gonna read that again. In music, the key or the key note is the fundamental note or tone to which the whole piece, so if you're playing a, a, a piece, a concerto or a symphony, it is the, the fundamental note or tone to which the whole piece is accommodated and with which it usually begins and always ends. 
I think that's awesome. Amen. So how does that pertain to us spiritually? Well, let's talk about, we talked about what a key is. Let's talk about, again, what is a kingdom or what is the kingdom? Uh, the kingdom in the Greek is the word uh, basileia. It means royal power, kingship, dominion, or rule. So if we put those two definitions together and relate it to the keys of the kingdom of heaven, the keys of the kingdom of heaven are instruments for shutting or unlocking God's royal power, his kingship, and his dominion here on the earth. I'm going to say that again. The keys of the kingdom are instruments for shutting or unlocking God's royal power, his kingship, or his dominion here on the earth. They are fundamental notes or tones by which God's perfect plan in the uh, perfect plan began. They are the notes or tone by which his perfect plan and his will is established in the earth. And they are the fundamental notes or tones through which God's perfect plan and his will will be completed. Amen. So we have been given the keys of the kingdom. And again, as we said in six verse Matthew verses 16, verse 19, he says, I give you to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Now, usually a lot of times when we read that text, we read it as I will give you the keys to the kingdom. But that's not actually what it says. See, when you think about keys to something, you usually think about something physical that you can hold in your hand. Keys to your car, keys to your house, so forth and so on. But when you see the word keys used with the word or the preposition of, you usually think about it in terms of music. All right. So, for instance, uh, play me the, the, the song Amazing Grace in the key of G the key of G. So you're thinking about a music key, which was reason why the definition of key as a note or a tone stood out to me so much. Because what God is saying here is the keys of the kingdom are a sound. Amen. Now, we all know if you've watched this broadcast at all, that Pastor Byron is continually saying how we live in a word-based system. We live in the world that is framed by the words of our mouth. And words that are spoken are a sound. Amen? So the keys of the kingdom are a sound. But it's not just any sound. Amen? We have to play the right keys. We have to speak the right keys Amen. Amen. So the keys of the kingdom are instruments. And what instrument do, does God given us? It's our voice. Just like he, he made us in his image and in his likeness. And God speaks. Amen. He's speaking this day. He spoke, let there be life. And like pastor says, when he spoke, that light is still going throughout eternity to this day and will never cease as long as this earth remains. So God expects us to operate just like him. He expects us to use this instrument, to use our voice, but to speak the supernatural keys of God. Amen. What are those keys? It's the word of God. Amen. Our voices release the sound that unlocks God's royal power, his royal, his kingship, and his supernatural dominion here in the earth. Amen. Psalms 103, verses 20, very familiar text, says, Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. See, we give God's word a voice when we speak it out of our mouth. That is the key. 
That is the sound that God has given us as believers so that whatever we bind on earth is already bound in heaven. And whatever we loose on earth, it's already been loosed in heaven. God just wants us to manifest his kingdom, his dominion here in the earth. Amen. So the scripture in Psalm 103, 20 says the angels hearken to the voice of his word. The word hearken means to hear, to listen, to obey. God's angels are listening for the sound of the voice of his word so that they can carry out his commandments here in the earth. But they don't obey just any voice. They don't obey just any sound. They have to hear the right keys and the right keys are God's word his commandments, not our own will, not what the world is saying, God's word. Amen. I amen. So in order to know which keys to play a song, let's think about it in terms of, of playing a musical piece. In order to know which keys to play in a song or in a musical composition, you have to either have sheet music or you must have had the sheet music, study the sheet music, learn the sheet music, put into practice the piece to be played or to be sung, amen? You know, when you see artists, professional musical artists, they don't just, unless they're in worship, they don't just get out and sing a song without having learned it, learned the right keys, practiced it, and, and then they perform it in excellence and they get the desired results because of the work that has been done beforehand. Well, that's the same with us as believers. We've been given this word. This is our sheet music. So if we want to know the right keys, we've got to get into this word. Amen. We've got to know what the right keys are, but we can't just hold it. So I got sheet music. Ooh, I just love this song. It's so beautiful. But if you don't do anything with it, it's not going to do you any good. No, we've got to get into this sheet music. We've got to study these keys. We've got to understand the promises that God has given them, but that's just not enough just to read them. The Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But we know as pastor has taught us that faith is released by the words of our mouth. So we don't want to just take it in, take it in, and then don't ever declare anything. No, we have to, to get in this word, get our sheet music, find out the keys, study it, practice and put it into practice by speaking God's word. And it needs to be in us. Amen. It needs to be in us because most of us, you know, we have phones on our, uh, the Bible on our phones and on our uh, laptops and whatever. But, you know, this word needs to be in you. The Bible says that he'll bring things to our remembrance, but he can't bring them to our remembrance if we haven't put them in there. See, when you see a, a, a great pianist, a masterful musician, whether they're singing or they're playing, that they, they may have sheet music in front of them, but they've already learned that piece. It's on the inside of them. They can make inflections and they can uh, bring life to the piece because they have put it on the inside. So it's become a part of who they are and how they think. Amen. Well, that's the same thing for us. We should be putting the word of God in us so much, meditating on that word, speaking that word. So it's a part of us so that when situations arise, the Holy Spirit can bring that up to our remembrance. And we know exactly what to speak, exactly what key to sing in order to bring light to and change that situation. Amen. Amen. So we got to know the right keys in order to see change, in order to see the kingdom of God manifested in our lives. So if we know this, why is it that we see so many Christians or we see and, and and don't get me wrong, if you look in the right places, there are Christians and there are churches that are doing great works in this season. 
a lot of times we don't see it because it's not reported in the media what's going on in the body of Christ. But I tell you this, there are miracles, there are signs, and there are wonders, even in the midst of the turmoil that's going on in this world, going in the body of Christ right now. But it's not enough. It's not enough. We know that the church is not where it's supposed to be. Why do we see so many Christians that seem to be defeated in their lives? That don't see the word of God manifested in our lives. And I'm not saying we're living a life free of challenges. You know, we all go through challenges. We're going through challenges right now with our son's injury. But we, we're not dismayed. We're not discouraged about it because we know the keys that we have to speak light into the situation. We know that no weapon that is formed against us, the weapon may be formed, but it shall not prosper. Amen. So why do so many Christians not see the power of God, not see that kingdom dominion working in their lives? Well, number one, some Christians are tone deaf. Now, you all know somebody that's tone deaf. You usually sit next to them in church. And a lot of times they're the loudest person <laughs> in the congregation singing. Ah, ah, God is an awesome God. You know, God bless him. He says, make a joyful noise unto the, to the Lord. But we have a lot of tone deaf Christians. In other words, we have a lot of Christians that don't know the keys. Tone deaf people sing pretty much all the wrong keys because they lack the ability to hear. What are the wrong keys? The wrong keys are anything that is contrary to what the word of God says. It can sound like this. I've got a few examples. Jokes about how horrible 2020 is this year. You know, I know a lot of times we get through challenges by joking about it. But God gave us a word at the beginning of last year and the beginning of this year that this is the year of restoration. This is the church's finest hour. So I don't care what it looks like. And it may, everybody else in the world may be joking about 2020 to cope with everything that's going on, but that's not how God wants us to operate. Those are the wrong keys. So resist the urge. Don't share that post. You can laugh about it. It's, they're funny. I see them all the time, jokes about 2020. But as believers... It is our responsibility to share life, to share the light of Christ. We're not speaking what everybody else says. Those are the wrong keys. Amen. Let's not be tone deaf. All right. What do the wrong keys look like? Repeating and sharing every story that you hear on the news or social media. There is so much, y'all, so much misinformation on the mainstream media, on news, on social media, uh, right there, out, out there right now. You don't even know what to believe, even from what seems to be reputable sources. Even we look at the CDC right now. One day we hear this, one day we hear something else about this pandemic, you know, this political thing. We hear one thing from one side, one thing from another side, and we're listening to all this misinformation. And then we find ourselves as Christians getting on social media and sharing every article, whether it's against the candidate that we don't like or for the candidate that we do like and vice versa. But once again, as a believer, what has God called you to do? See, we're, he hasn't called us to get out there and, and play and sing the wrong keys. No, we're supposed to use the keys of the kingdom, use our voice, play the right words pray the right keys which is his word into the atmosphere amen call those things which be not as though they were don't agree with everything that's going on in the world let's not be tone deaf let's check our hearing and make sure our hearing is in alignment with god's word amen here's another example of what it can sound like to use to be tone deaf and use the wrong keys <clears throat> We hear a funny joke and, you know, young people and not even older people that I see these days. We hear a funny joke and our response is, I am so dead. Ah, and we put a little emojis with a skull and 
uh, the eyes crossed out or whatever. You know, <laughs> I'm not trying to be overly spiritual about stuff, but it's just amazing to me that we have been so programmed to think and to speak like the world by the enemy, but while we're constantly taking in that we don't even recognize when he is implanting words of death into our mouth. And yes, I understand you're joking and they not, not, not be where your heart is, but if it's constantly coming out of your mouth, words of death, the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So look, I know everybody else is joking and saying I'm dead, but you're not dead. <laughs> You are the life of, you've got the life of Christ living on the inside of you. So don't speak death. Those are the wrong keys. That's things that tone deaf believers say and say, I'm not tone deaf. Come on, say it. I'm not tone deaf in Jesus name. Read, turn to uh, Galatians chapter three, and I'm going to read verses 26 and 29, and then I'm going to move on to chapter four. But uh, Galatians chapter three, verse 26 for, says, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Verse 29 says, and if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So the same promise that God gave to Abraham, we are heirs of it. We are heirs of the kingdom of God. Every blessing is ours. We are heirs to it. But look at chapter four, Galatians chapter four, verse one. It says, now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant or a slave, though he be Lord of all. What is that saying? That's saying, look, God has made us heirs. We're joint heirs with Christ Jesus. We're heirs according to the promise. All the blessings of God, all the blessings of Abraham, that we're the head and not the tail, that we're above only and not beneath. They are ours for the taking. But if we be a child, meaning we're spiritually immature, we're constantly saying the wrong things and we're feeding on the wrong things, we're feeding on everything the enemy is throwing our way and we're letting it come out of our mouths, and we're wondering why we're experiencing the same thing everybody else is experiencing. It's because of this scripture right here manifesting in our lives. Even though we are heirs, if we are immature children, we're just like slaves. Even though God has called us to be Lord over all. So we have to be mindful, my, my, my people. Amen. We have to be mindful of what we are looking at, what we are listening to, and what we are saying. No, we're citizens of the kingdom of God. We're a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. Now, peculiar means we're a little bit strange, but it, it you know, to the rest of the world, it seems strange that, you know, horrible things seem to be going on in the world, but we're decreeing I'm the head and not the tail. We're saying I'm above only and not beneath. We're seeing financial problems all around us, but we're saying, I oh, know I don't choose to participate in that. For my God supplies all of my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You know, symptoms are in our body, but we're not speaking that. We're speaking God's kingdom. We're saying and we're uh, giving voice to the right keys that says, Jesus bore my sickness. Jesus took my pain. The punishment for my peace was upon him and by his stripes, I was healed. Now that sounds peculiar to the world because they've been so programmed to say what everybody else is saying, but that is not us believers. Amen. Who are you? You are a citizen of the kingdom of God. You are not tone deaf in Jesus name. No, you get this word. You plant it in your heart and you speak it out of your mouth and you see the manifestation of his kingdom on the earth as it is in heaven. Amen. You bind and you loose in Jesus name. Amen. So some Christians uh, don't even know that they have the keys of the kingdom. 
because they never read the sheet music or they only hear it when they come to church or whatever gospel song is playing on the radio because they feel like that's their time with God. I don't have time to get into that, but that's not enough. That's not enough. We're in the season where that's not enough. All right. So we have number one, we have tone deaf Christians. And number two, we have some Christians that are not tone deaf. They know some chords. They know a few notes. They can da 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 da. -da. They can play chopsticks or Mary had a little lamb. But they do not know enough to see the full piece, the full concerto, the full symphony played out in their lives. In other words, they may experience some manifestation of the word of God in their life here and there, which is good, but because they don't dig deeper into study, meditation, and declaring God's word, they don't see the fullness of God's plan manifested in their lives. You know, I, I emphasize those words dig deeper because we had a corporate prayer in our parking lot uh, a little while ago. And that was one of the words that God spoke to us. Dig deeper. It's the time for us as believers to dig deeper. Amen. It's, it's time out for surface Christianity. You know what I mean by that? Where, you know, we just, we just get what's on the surface. We're not planting ourselves, and I'm getting ahead of myself, but we're not planting ourselves. We're not digging deeper to get those nutrients that are deep in the soil for us so that we can stay strong in the midst of turmoil in the world and so that we can grow strong and produce fruit. See, that's what God has called us to do. He wants us to be, dig deeper, to be planted like the tree by the, the rivers of living water that brings forth fruit in its season. And the Bible says that whatsoever we do will prosper. That's in Psalm first one, chapter 1. Amen? We got to dig deeper. Amen. But a lot of Christians are just surface. We're just on the surface. So we might know a few keys. We might, might know a few chords. We might know some of the right keys to speak. But because we don't know, we haven't studied the whole piece, we're not seeing the full benefit of God's will manifested in our lives. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world. There we go again. We're, not, we're in this world, but we're not of it. We're not supposed to be conformed or just like the world. It says, But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. See, God wants his good and acceptable and perfect will, his full will to be manifested in our lives, not just part of it. He wants us to walk in all of it. But in order for us to walk in all of it, we have to have the full peace, not just a few of the, the, the well-known scriptures, which are good, but, you know, we all know the ones that are well known. But that, this, a whole, this is a whole word, whole book, living word of God, full of promises, full of wisdom of the heart of God, the nature of God, how God works. See, a lot of times we miss it because we know a few scriptures, but we don't get the full manifestation of it because we don't know God. We don't know the heart of God because we have not studied how he operated in the past, in the present, in the future, how he, what he's going to do. We just pull out a few scriptures here and there, which I said before is good, but it's not enough. If you want to see the fullness of God's will and the fullness of God's plan manifested in our lives, we've got to know more. If you've never read the full Bible. And I'm not just saying, you know, you just go through a reading plan just to do it. Because I said, I, so you can tell somebody I read the whole Bible. No, intimate time with God. So you can know, so you can know his will, know his heart. When you have questions about things that are going on in your life or things that are going on in the world. So you're not shaken. You're not moved because you understand the nature of God, how he does things. 
So you, you learn how, okay, God, I don't quite understand that. So you learn how to take his word. You understand how to meditate on his word so that you can hear his voice and he begins to speak to you and give you clarity on what he means by a text that you might understand or give you clarity on what is going on in your life, why you're experiencing this or why this happened, how you open up the door for the enemy maybe to come in into your lives. And then you have his wisdom on the keys to use to change that situation. Amen. Amen. I'm running out of time, so let me get done. I'm I'm almost there. Praise the Lord. So we must transform our minds to think, to act, to respond just like Christ in whatever circumstance we face here on earth. We must have the mindset like Jesus that even though the circumstances in this world are saying one thing, that say this, I am in this world, but I am not of it. Let's look at Luke chapter 8, verses 49 through 55. And it says, While he yet spake, there cometh one, cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. Listen to how Jesus talked. Listen to how Jesus thought. And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter and James and John and the father and the mother of the maiden. And all wept and bewailed her. But he said, listen to the keys Jesus used. He said, weep not. She is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn, verse 53, knowing that she was dead. And he put them all out and took her by the hand and called saying, maid, arise. And her spirit came again and she arose straightway and he commanded to give her meat. See, Jesus wasn't moved by the circumstances of this natural world. He understood that he had the keys to unlock dominion, power, and the rule of the kingdom of God in the earth. So he spoke kingdom reality, not worldly circumstances. He spoke kingdom reality, what God told him to say, not the earthly reality. John chapter 8, verse 28, Then Jesus said unto them, We have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall, excuse me, when ye have lifted up the son of man, then shall ye know that I am he and that I do nothing of myself. But as my father has taught me, I speak these things. So Jesus only did what the father taught him to do. That's what he did. That's what we're to do. We're to say what the father has taught us to say. But if we've never sat once again, and had intimate time with the Father, then we're not being taught the keys. We're not being, we're not looking into the sheet music, so we're going to have a messed up symphony. It's going to sound horrible. Amen? Amen. All right, we're almost there. If we want to see transformation in our lives and in this world, we must speak the word of God. Again, Matthew 16, 19 says, and it also says this in Matthew 18 and 18. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now, the reason I read that again is because it says whatever you bind. Not whatever Jesus binds. Now, he said, whatever you bind. And we read this earlier, the angels are hearkening to the voice of his world, because, word because when you bind it, that's what they hear. They hear Jesus. They don't hear you. But God has given us dominion in the earth. That's Genesis 1, 20, uh, 28, 26, 28, one of those two. God has given us authority on the earth. He gave us dominion in the earth. So we must use the power and the authority that he has given us. We must use our voice. We must use the sound. We must use the keys of the kingdom. 
Amen. So we are to bind, not just say, God, will you stop this? God, please. No, 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 no. That's not what God has called us to do. He's given us the authority. Amen. So he doesn't say you, bind. he doesn't say Jesus bind. He says you bind. It's already been bound in heaven. So Jesus is not trying to bind it. He already did that on the cross. He did that when he rose from the dead. He did that when he went and he took the keys of death and hell. Ah, there's another set of keys that we have authority over with, over, amen? That's in the book of Revelation. The Amplified Version says, one more time, I give you the keys, the authority of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind, whatever you forbid, whatever you declare to be improper and unlawful on the earth will have already been bound in heaven. And whatever you loose, whatever you permit, whatever you declare lawful on earth will have already been loosed in heaven. You have the authority. Amen. God's will in the earth is not automatic. This is why throughout the Old Testament, uh, God always used his prophets to speak and declare his will so that it could be done in the earth. See, God doesn't just come into earth and just do. He always, and he needs a man because he's given us dominion to speak his word and declare it so that he now has permission, legal authority to come into the earth and work his work, work his will, work his plan in the earth. So throughout the Old Testament, we see how God used his prophets to speak and declare his will so that it could be done in the earth. And God is still doing the same today. Because we're under the new covenant, however, God does not only speak through those who operate in the gift of prophecy, but he has also given power to all believers through the power of the Holy Spirit that is upon us. If you've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, upon you, then power of God is upon you to prophesy. Amen. He wants us to prophesy his will in our lives and his will in the earth. Now I'm going to take a little sidebar here if I have time. God is still working through the office of the prophet. It's a little bit different now in the new covenant, but God is still working through the gift of prophecy. First Thessalonians um, chapter 5 verses 20 through 21 says, despise not prophesying, prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up because earlier in the, in the year, at the beginning of this lockdown, we were having a prayer session uh, on our prayer line. And as I was praying, the Lord, I didn't know where it came from. Well, I didn't know where it came from, but it just kind of popped up out of nowhere. The Lord had me to say, pray for the prophets. Now, that's not something that I've ever said before, but it came up in my spirit because, and, and God has revealed it to me throughout this time, this season, this year, that God is speaking through those who operate in the gift of prophecy or the office of, office of a prophet in this season. Some are speaking what's to come. Some are speaking warnings from the Lord to direct the church on how to pray. As we hear the word of the prophets, we're not to despise prophesying, but we are to prove all things. We are to judge what is said by God's word and his spirit. And we are, we are to hold fast to that which is good. But we should not close our ears to what the, those who are operating in the, in the office of the prophets are saying. I'm saying this for a reason. God is speaking to his prophets in this season. And if you are not listening, there's a lot of stuff you're missing about what's really going on in the world today. So that's just a little sidebar. You think on that, you meditate on that, you judge that word. But God is speaking to his prophets and we need to be listening. We need to be judging those words and we need to be asking the Holy Spirit how we're to pray in this season. Amen. So we need to heed the warning. We need to be praying and decreeing God's will in the earth. Don't agree with what the prophets of Baal are declaring. Who are the prophets of Baal? The news media, the naysayers, 
those who are being led by the spirit of Antichrist that the Bible says is already at work in the earth. They are trying to bring about Satan's plan, the kingdom of darkness. But no, we're not supposed to be repeating what they're saying. Going back to what I said in the beginning, we are supposed to be agreeing with God and we are to speak his word only. Amen. I'm running out of time. So the Bible says, Matthew 6 and 10, and also in Luke chapter 11, verse 2, it says, And he said to them, When ye pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth, or on earth as it is in heaven. God is not only using those who operate in the office of a prophet, but he has poured out his spirit on all flesh, Acts chapter 2, verse 17 and 18, also in the book of Joel. And he says, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. God's will is his word. And although we're not in the rev uh, the tribulation period yet, that's talked about in the book of Revelation and Daniel and Ezekiel, we are in the last days. And I believe we are in the season and the generation that will usher in both the rapture and the return of Jesus to the earth. But we have to prophesy some things. We have to speak God's will in the earth as it is in heaven. He's using the, those who operate in the office of a prophet, but he's also calling us as believers. As we hear the instruction, as we, instruction, as we hear the warnings and the wisdom of God spoken through his prophets, and as we listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, we are to declare his will in the earth as it is in heaven. Because the time frame of the return of Jesus, the time frame of the rapture and the time frame of the, of the return of Jesus has to do with us getting in alignment with his will, speaking his will in the earth so that Jesus can come in and fulfill this symphony, fulfill his plan in the earth. Amen. Ephesians 5:27. Amen. You can turn there for a second, but you know, we all know that we are not ready right now. I know we can see the seasons and we know that the rapture is coming at any time. But we can see through scripture that the church is not ready. How do we know that? Ephesians 5, 27. It says that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. God is coming back. Jesus is coming back for a church that is glorified and a church that is without spot or wrinkle. We're not there yet. But one thing that we can see it, that has happened in this year is that things can turn quickly. Your whole, the whole nature of, of how we do things in this country and in the world change within a matter of a few months so don't think it too long it could be 10 years could be 11 years could be a short period that's a short period of time 10 years is not a long time it could be shorter than that no man knows the day or the hour but god is doing a work in this season judgment must first come to the house of god so we see that in the earth right now there's a shaking going on. There's a whole lot of shaking going on. Hebrews 12, <coughs> 20, 25 to 29. And I know I'm out of time, but I'm going to finish. It says, be careful that you do not refuse to listen to the one who is speaking. This is the New Living Translation. For if the people of Israel did not escape when they refused to listen to Moses, God's prophet, the earthly messenger, we will certainly not escape if we reject the one who speaks to us from heaven. When God spoke from Mount Sinai, his voice shook the earth. But now he makes another promise. Once again, I will shake not only the earth, but the heavens also. This means that all of creation will be shaken and removed 
so that only unshakable things will remain. Since we are receiving a kingdom that is unshakable, let us be thankful and please God by worshiping him with holy fear and awe, for God is a consuming or devouring fire. Amen. There's a shaking going on, but it's for our good, men and women of God. See, God is shaking anybody that's not planted right now. And see what happens when the shaking goes on is that there's a lot of exposure that's happening and that's going to continue to happen in the kingdom of God first, but also in this world. God is exposing corruption in the church. God is cor uh, exposing corruption in our government. God is exposing those things that the enemy has been used using to try and hold back his people and see what you can do in this season is that you can either fall to the wayside or you can realize before you fall because God is God of mercy that the shaking is going on and I need to get planted once again it's time to dig deeper you need to be planted in the word of God God is drawing a plumb line in this season and you cannot straddle the fence anymore God will spew you out of his mouth he says in the book of Revelation if you are lukewarm he wants you to be either cold or hot so it's time to make a decision are you for God or are you against him because there's no middle ground look at Matthew chapter 15 verse 13 this is the end of my lesson I'm gonna stop here but he answered and said, every plant, Matthew 15, 13, which my heavenly father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Psalm verses 92, verse 13, but this is the good news. Those that be planted in the house of God or in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of God. See, we're not, we're not meant to be judged with the world. Now, we need to be planted so all the shaking that's going on, we can make sure that we are in God's house. We are in God's kingdom. So I admonish you today, get planted in God. Plant God's word in your heart so that you can recognize the keys that he has given you and to his church to bring forth his perfect will, his perfect plan, his beautiful symphony, his kingdom dominion in your life in his church, in the earth, as it is in heaven. Amen. I hope you receive something from that today. And if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, if you have not made that firm decision to get planted into the kingdom of God, then today is your day. The Bible says today is a day of salvation. Do not leave this broadcast without making Jesus the Lord of your life. Amen. So repeat this prayer after me. If you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life, if you want to be in the kingdom of God, if you want to get those keys and you want to see your life transform, repeat this prayer after me. me. Say, dear, dear God, I recognize that I'm a sinner and I can't save myself. So I repent. I change my thinking. I turn from my way of doing things and I turn to you. I need you and I receive you as my savior and I make you my Lord. I believe you died on the cross for me. I believe you paid a price for me that I could not pay. I believe you rose from the dead on the third day with all power in your hands. And I want that power in my life. I receive you into my life. I receive your Holy Spirit to make me new. Amen. In Jesus name. Amen. If you receive, if you receive Jesus today, if you prayed that prayer, then guess what? You're a new creation in Christ Jesus. The Bible says all things have passed away. That's in your spirit. Behold, all things have become new. You've got a new spirit. God cleaned you up. He made you perfect. And his Holy Spirit has come to live on the inside of you today. And that means the power of God is on the inside of you. But if you want those keys, you need, a little, you need that power that's in you, upon you. You need to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So right now, just pray this after me. If you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, 
Say, dear God, thank you for making me new. Thank you that your Holy Spirit is upon me. Now I want to be totally immersed in your power as your word declares in Acts chapter 2. It says when uh, the Holy Spirit has come upon you, that power comes upon you. So I receive your power upon me. Baptize me with your Holy Spirit. I receive my heavenly prayer language. Now open your mouth and begin to speak. Amen. Amen. I congratulate you if you prayed that prayer. I believe somebody received the baptism of the Holy Spirit today. Take that new language that you have. You're a baby now, but you take that new language and you begin to speak every single day. And the Bible says when you pray in an unknown tongue, you edify yourself. You're building up your spirit, man, so that you can be stronger and see the manifestation of the power of God in your life. One more invitation. Now, you may be saved. You may have prayed the prayer of salvation before. And maybe at one time you were living for God, but circumstances happen. Maybe you're angry with God. Maybe you lost a loved one. Maybe you lost a job. Maybe you lost a marriage. Something happened that discouraged you and you walked away and you went back to living just like you were never saved. But the Bible says that God is married to the backslider. You may have walked away, but God never walked away from you. He's waiting with open arms for you to come back. So if that's you today and you want to rededicate your life to Jesus, simple prayer. It's a repair of repentance. Just say, God, Father God, Thank you for loving me. Thank you that you never gave up on me. I recognize I'm going the wrong way. And I make a firm inward decision to change my thinking, to turn back to you and get back in fellowship with you. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for the plan of God for my life. I will walk with you all the days of my life. Satan, you have no power over me. You have no authority in my life. I'm a child of God. And I'm in his kingdom in Jesus name. Amen. Congratulations. If you prayed that prayer today, we want to hear from you. If you prayed for salvation or rededication, go to our website at lwc-online forward slash connect. And if you have a prayer request or you just got saved, uh, put your information, send it to us. And we want to send information to you so that we can help you in your kingdom walk. Amen. We want you to develop the life of Christ so that you can begin to share it. Amen. If you're interested in church membership at Living Word Church, put a message in the comments, send us a message. We'll get the new members classes to you, get you connected so that you can begin to work with us in the kingdom work that God has for us in Livingston, in Kenya, because we're all over the world and God has tremendous things in store and we need your gifts. Amen. We need what God has placed on the inside of you to help us accomplish what he's called us to do. Amen. I know I went a little long today. I apologize, but I don't get a whole lot of opportunities to, to minister. Um, so I just thank God for the opportunity. I thank you, Pastor Byron. Hey, once again, I love you. I love you all living more church. We're praying for you every day. We're just uh, so excited to see what God is manifesting in your life. Remember to speak the keys. Don't be tone deaf. Speak God's word and declare this as we always say, the word of God is life. The word of God is alive and the word of God is living in you.